You're listening to Tradies News in a Nutshell. Welcome back. David King and Kane Corns, not too far away with Fireball Friday. But before we get there, as promised, Nims is all in studio. Welcome to you, Nims. What a hell of a promise. Jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do it every week, whether I promise it or not. <laughs> no F1 this weekend, but the season seems to have just turned like that. Uh, back-to-back races in Monaco and Spain. Uh, the next race is next weekend in Canada. But in the two just gone, any sort of semblance of competition or challenge seems to have gone out the window with another two wins uh, to Max Verstappen. So that's uh, four uh, wins in... F- uh, that's five wins, I believe, from the seven races this season. This and the is, other two have both gone to his teammate. It's always been Red Bull, Red Bull, Red Bull. But uh, yeah, Maxi Verstappen absolutely cruised home to a first place victory. How's this for a, a perfect weekend, right? So in Barcelona, he not only won the race, he led every single lap. He took pole position and he got the bonus point as well for the fastest lap. So it's just basically tick, 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 tick. And I reckon there's a lot of people saying this is detrimental to the sport which it does make it kind of boring. But at the same time, you do have to just admire what he's doing. He's in rarefied air at the moment. We've spoken about how gripping the 2021 season was and how that coincided with Drive to Survive probably at its pinnacle and what that did for the sport. Uh, And I think probably the F1 bosses wanted to capitalise on that and made a bunch of changes uh, last year to equalise the competition even more so. At least that's what we heard. How has it gone so far the other way? It's weird. I don't know what's going I'll tell you, it was promising to see what Mercedes did, though, because it was good to see both Mercedes drivers in P2, P3. It was also slightly, it was a, a hollow kind of win because, you know, 24 seconds between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton uh, is, does kind of sort of say, say it all. But it's good to see Mercedes getting a couple of gains. Ferrari is the real basket case here that I want to know because when we saw them at the AGP, a couple of years back, it's a couple of years back. No, when, the, when Charles Leclerc went and won and led the championship last year, you were thinking, "All right, it's a resurgence of Ferrari." All the Ligon Street basically were flying their flags and getting their shirts out from like 1995 again, and now it's just gone business as usual, and it's Red Bull a go go. Happy Lewis Hamilton this week. Uh, Mercedes introduced a few upgrades in the second last. Uh, round uh, in Monaco and they seem to come good in Barcelona. Mm-hmm. He said the car felt better than it had at any point since the start of 2022 and that is highly encouraging. Unsigned for 2024 and looms as the biggest piece. Yeah, it's weird how everyone keeps talking about, oh, it's he's going to go to Ferrari and, you know, th- w- yes, you know, anything can happen and we've still got that little silly season that will play out. Admittedly, the whole I, season is the silly season. That's all anyone talks about is next year. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. But um, it, that you know when the, you normally have the mid-season summer break where people, you know, Lewis Hamilton can be walking past a McDonald's that, I don't know, Toto Wolf is walking away from. It's like, they have a falling out at local eatery. He's going to, he's going to Ferrari. Like, everyone just talks about rumours and whatnot here. But I would love to see just... Uh, there's something about the romanticism of going to Ferrari. Uh, it's... It's what, it's the premier kind of, when you think Formula One, you think Ferrari, it's a legacy kind of team. And Lewis Hamilton at Ferrari, it might be the Alonso at, uh, at Aston Martin. Very briefly, wouldn't suspect Hamilton will be going back to where he started, McLaren. No, probably not. Uh, <laughs> right now. They're struggling big time. Piastri, our man, 10th and 13th in the last two, but teammate Lando Norris uh, really coming off the boil, 17th in the last one. What's going on? I have no idea, but I can tell you right now the happiest person on the grid is off the grid in Daniel Ricciardo, third driver at Red Bull. He's doing all, you know, he gets to go to all the races and whatnot, and it's kind of a little bit of vindication too because everyone was saying, even his teammate, Lando Morris was throwing him under the bus last year, and now all of a sudden, if Oscar Piastri was absolutely blitzing him, and yes, it was great that he got points last time around, but McLaren is going pee nowhere at the moment. Very briefly, V8 Speed Series this weekend at Winton? Yes, yes. And if you're wondering where Winton is, uh, it is just two hours from the Melbourne CBD, but you're going to have a whole stack of categories in action uh, starting today, actually, on Stan Sport, which is going to be great. TCR Australia, so all the hot hatches like your Honda Civics, the Peugeots, um, you know, the Hyundai i9, i30s and whatnot. Uh, Not only that, too. We're going to be seeing our very own Stephen Johnson from the driver's seat in a Trans Am Mustang. Uh, John Bow, legendary Australian Viet Touring Car Champion, will also be in action as well for possibly the final time. And you can see some classic Viet Touring Cars as well. Nims Azor, energy, expertise, thank you. Oh.
I don't know about the uh, the expertise part, but the energy's there. Energy's always there, and you can catch more of that on the driver's seat Wednesday night. <laughs>